Hi everyone, I'm Colin Humphreys, the CEO at Sintasso. Today we're going to be talking about Kratics, the platform as a product framework. So I'm going to share some slides and do a quick demo. Let's get started with that. So as I mentioned, Kratics is the framework to deliver platform as a product. Kratics enables application teams and platform teams to codify the contract between them. And they take that definition <clears throat> of what's delivered by the platform team to the application teams. And they take that and create a promise that's then installed into Kratics that makes that promise available on demand as a service across the organization. Kratics itself deploys across multiple Kubernetes clusters, but is able to orchestrate resources either on Kubernetes off, off Kubernetes or a hybrid of both. So let's get started with the demo. So what we're going to do first, we're going to put on the hat of a platform team member. We're going to build a platform API cluster. We're going to install Kratics to that cluster. And then we're going to create a worker cluster, which is going to be there for us to schedule workloads, to schedule those requested resources by the application teams. So in order to make that happen, we are going to follow the quick start, which is on the Kratics GitHub repository. So if you go to Kratics docs quick start uh, uh, in the Sentasso uh, uh, organization, uh, we're going to follow this. We're going to use Kubernetes in Docker, kind, on my laptop. So I've already cloned Kratics. The first thing we need to do is set up our platform cluster, which is this command. We're then going to kubectl apply a distribution of Kratics, which is one command that applies all of Kratics. And then we're also going to create uh, an installation of Minio. So Minio is something that's installed locally that looks like Amazon's S3. That powers the GitOps fabric that runs behind Kratics. <clears throat> so we could use Git, we could use GitLab, we could use S3, we could use Minio, we can use anything that can power GitOps. So let's copy those commands. Let's get them running uh, on my laptop. So now we're creating a platform cluster. So while that's running, <clears throat> as I mentioned, as part of this, we are installing Minio. So Minio is going to be running uh, effectively as a, a GitOps repository on the platform API cluster for the worker clusters to stay in sync with. Because when our uh, application teams make requests uh, for the platform, those requests are, are formed into workloads. Those workloads are placed into our GitOps fabric and they are transferred to the worker clusters. So the worker clusters are continuously converging on the, the state that is declared by the platform API cluster. So let's see how that's going on my laptop. There we go, it's practically installed. Let's get Minio installing. Okay, so we're now uh, in the state where we have platform API cluster with Kratics installed on it. We now need to install our worker cluster. So let's go back to our uh, quick start, set up the worker cluster, these four commands. So here we're going to create a cluster called worker. We're going to register that cluster with the platform cluster so it knows about it. We're going to install the GitOps toolkit on the worker. And then lastly, we're going to set up the resources for GitOps toolkit so it goes and syncs with the Minio repository that we set up on our platform cluster. Copy all of those. Let's get those running. So we're now moving towards a situation where we have platform API cluster, Kratics installed. We have our worker cluster. Uh, set up with our uh, GitOps uh, toolkit running on there. The GitOps toolkit will be continuously converging against the state declared by the platform API cluster. Because we're running on my laptop, we only have one worker cluster, but we could run as many worker clusters as we choose. And the platform API cluster will be able to schedule the workloads that are created by the application team requests across the multiple worker clusters. Here we are, we're just setting that up installing our GitOps toolkit, and lastly, installing those resources. There we go. So we're in the situation now that we've got Kratics installed, and we've got our multiple Kubernetes clusters set up, but we don't have a platform as a product yet. What we need to do is actually take a promise 
So something that we want to offer as a service to our application teams, and we need to build that uh, as a promise and install that into our platform API cluster. So I've mentioned these promises a few times. What actually are promises? So a promise enables an enterprise to encode a capability that is offered by the platform to the application teams. So once something has been wrapped as a promise, that promise is installed into Kratix and it's available on demand as a service across the organization. So the kind of things we see offered as promises like with uh, initial installs of Kratix are things like databases, web servers, identity services. So those kind of things, they're offered as promises. And then we see teams starting to use those promises with higher level promises to compose things like supply chains, uh, development pipelines, um, uh, kind of all manner of higher level abstractions formed off those lower level kind of promises. So you have lower level promises and then they can be called by higher level promises. So you're using promises to compose your platform as a product that's relevant for your organization. So now we're going to go to part two. We're going to uh, promise via our platform Jenkins. So we've got a Jenkins promise. We as a platform team member, we're going to install that onto the platform API cluster. That is going to set up our system so that we're ready to uh, offer Jenkins as a service to our application teams. Let's go back to our quick start. And these two commands. I promise is one simple Kubernetes, uh, YAML document to install in Kubernetes. Okay, so now we've got the promise installed. When we've done that, we'll see what the promise actually does <clears throat> to enhance our platform. So a promise has three things within it. Firstly, a custom resource definition. So imagine a form that the application team need to fill in to tell the platform team what they need, what they want to specify about this capability. So for Jenkins, we're gonna make that super simple. We're just gonna specify the name of the Jenkins instance. The platform team is gonna be left to specify the JVM side, the, the plugins, the um, amount of RAM, storage, all of those kind of things, they're platform team concerns. The application team is just gonna give us a name. Next up in the promise, we have our worker cluster resources. These are any dependencies which are necessary whenever we create an instance of this capability. So for Jenkins, we need to make sure that on our worker clusters, we have the Jenkins operator already installed before we try and schedule a Jenkins instance onto them. So this could be things like daemon sets, metrics, monitoring, operators for anything that's needed by the promise. You see an entire collection of resources, whatever the dependencies are for the promise instance, they need to already be there on that cluster. This is where you put them in the worker cluster resources. And lastly, we have a request pipeline. And this is where you can do the kind of magic in your promises. You can, uh, in a request pipeline, you can uh, run containers one after the next to do any kind of business logic, anything that needs to be done off Kubernetes, anything at all in terms of compliance, governance, billing, all of those kind of things can happen in a request pipeline. The request pipeline is triggered whenever an instance is asked. So for our Jenkins setup, if an instance of Jenkins is requested, that request pipeline fires and we could do, as I say, compliance, billing, scanning, security, whatever it is that you need to do in your business, whenever a Jenkins instance is requested or modified, you can do that in this pipeline. So when we get this going, we've got our Jenkins promise with the CRD, work cluster resources and the request pipeline. We've added that. Now the CRD will be present on the platform API cluster. So now we have actually that API for Jenkins available. Our worker cluster resources, which is our Jenkins operator, that is scheduled to the worker cluster. So we should see a Jenkins operator on the worker cluster. So let's go and have a look for those. The first thing we can do on our platform cluster is to get CRDs and we should be able to see Jenkins in there. There we go. Jenkins is now present uh, on our platform API. So we can now uh, enable our application teams to create instances of Jenkins. We should also be able to look at the pods on our worker cluster via this command. And that should show us a Jenkins operator has been created. There we go, so that's running. So now we're in the situation in which we've got Our Jenkins promise has been installed, but we don't currently have any Jenkins instances. We're now just offering Jenkins as a service to our application teams. 
So let's go on to part three. Let's change hats now from platform team to application teams. And let's actually request a Jenkins from the service. So we're going to request a Jenkins. That is going to trigger off the pipeline, create a workload, and that's going to be scheduled. So let's make that happen. Get the command. Here we go. So I'm kickoff applying one simple file here, a Jenkins resource request. If I cat that file, it shows you how simple a request can be to the CRD that was inside the promise. So we're uh, issuing a resource that just says, name my Jenkins. This isn't a whole complex Jenkins setup. This is the request the application, application team makes to the platform. So the platform team are taking care of all of that complexity and remove the cognitive load of having to think about all of those configurations for the Jenkins operator. The application team just have to make this very simple request. Now, if the platform team wanted to make this complicated and enable far more functionality, they could also do that. That's why uh, uh, promises are the um, encapsulation of the contract between the application team and the platform team. It can be as simple or as complex as those interactions demand. So whatever the application teams care about, the platform team should expose those settings to the application teams. And the other things they don't care about, they can remove that cognitive load and deal with that at the platform level. So here we've just asked for a Jenkins called My Jenkins. It's a very, very simple request. So having done that, that request from the application team came in. That hit the CRD that was part of our promise. That triggered the request pipeline that was outlined inside the promise. So for this Jenkins promise, we just have a very simple pipeline. We're using the customized image, very straightforward image, to take the input request which just said name my Jenkins and we're transforming that into a more complex request that's suitable to, to steer the operator. So here we're going to decorate that request with things like storage, memory, the Jenkins plugins, all of that kind of stuff. We do all of that in the customized image and write it to slash output. Then that is transformed into a workload by Kratix. The workload is scheduled to the worker cluster. That workload triggers the Jenkins operator and a Jenkins instance is created ready for our application team to use. This is all done without intervention from the platform team. Everything is available as a service on demand as promised. So let's go and see if we can find some evidence of our Jenkins instance. So we should be able to see a pod created on the worker cluster. There we go, so we have Jenkins example. It's running, but it's not ready yet. It takes a while on my laptop, my load average of 20, <laughs> but only eight CPUs. So maybe this will take a while to come up. Now, if we want to go and use this Jenkins, uh, in an enterprise setup, we would have an entire kind of enterprise secret storage mechanism, something like Vault from HashiCorp. Uh, and we would uh, put a pointer to our secrets um, in the status for our promised resource and all of that would work properly. But we don't have that on my laptop, so we're gonna do this the very quick and easy way. We're gonna go straight to the worker cluster and pull out the Kubernetes secrets for the username and the password. So let's run those two commands. There we go, so Jenkins operator is our username. There's our password. Now what we're going to do is start a port forward directly to Jenkins. Let's see if it's running. So this takes a while on my laptop. Hopefully you can see it's starting. So there we go, we've got Jenkins running. Uh, if we go and grab the username and the password from the Kubernetes secrets, so that was our username. Our password, this value. Let's see if we can sign in. It's optimistic with a load average of 20, but we will definitely try. There we go. So what we did there, as I say, an application team made a very simple request, say, give me a Jenkins called My Jenkins. That request came in, hit the promised CRD, 
the request pipeline, uh, that created a workload. That workload was scheduled uh, via our GitOps framework to the worker cluster, which triggered the Jenkins operator, which is also part of the promise. And then the Jenkins instance was created and we've just been and logged into that. So now as an application team member, we're happy. We can use Jenkins. It was very fast. It was very easy. I didn't have to do a whole bunch of specifications about Jenkins. I didn't have to interact with my compliance team or my billing team or any of that kind of nature because all of that was taken care of by the promise that was created in collaboration with the platform team. So in summary, as I mentioned, Kratix is the framework to deliver platform as a product. You deploy Kratix across multiple Kubernetes clusters, and once it's deployed, you compose your platform from promises which you load into Kratix. So the example promise we loaded in here was a promise for Jenkins. We deployed Kratix, we loaded a Jenkins promise, and then we consumed that Jenkins promise as an application team member. If you've got any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, go to sentasso.io to look for my details. Thank you very much for your time today.